So folks, the fallout continues. Earlier today, we discussed how old Donnie was booted from the ballot in Colorado and how this is a major decision by the Colorado Supreme Court. It's the first real big definitive move to knock Trump out of the 2024 election. There are other challenges in other states based on similar laws and they may go in a similar direction, but this is the first one. And Trump continues to have an utter meltdown and has, has, to, has had a collapsing seizure over it. But also, guys, Donald Trump and his team are collapsing, are crumbling. His lawyers are leaving him saying, we give up. We can't do this anymore after this decision because it's yet another sign that things are breaking down for him. So whether it's him physically collapsing, fainting to the ground because he knows his life is over, that he can't be president if he can't be on the ballot and he can't stay out of jail if he's not president. So this decision, in effect, could sentence him to life, as we've been talking about. But also, people around him sensing that if he's not on the ballot, he certainly can't be president, and then he certainly can't protect them and pay them and give them power. They are running to the exit. And the following clips I have, which include more info about Trump's absolute freakout collapse, also include how his entire world is crumbling. Every second essential. Guys, hit the like and subscribe button. Again, fantastic day. Write in the comments saying, let's go and hooray, because this is a day to celebrate. What does it mean politically for Trump to be removed potentially from the Republican primary ballot in Colorado? Yeah, well, if I think we're going to go through a year of this has never happened before in this presidential election. So be prepared to uh, keep stating that, um, you know, as Ellie was noting, and I, I do think it is important context you're bringing up here. Uh, the vast majority of these cases to date have actually gone the other way. And uh, I would imagine that that is not going to be lost on the Supreme Court when it looks at the specifics of this case, but uh, looks at this issue broadly. Uh, politically, of course, Colorado has 10 electoral votes. They were in Joe Biden's column, not Donald Trump's column uh, back in 2020. Uh, but if you start taking... Uh, potentially available electoral votes off the board. Uh, the the map to 270, even though this was not part of his 2020 path, uh, becomes more uh, complicated in that way. We have no indication yet that the Trump team was planning to engage fully in Colorado and 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 run a concerted effort uh, in that state to play for those electoral votes. But again, it's the broader concept here that would be earth shaking to the uh, election itself. And uh, as we learned back in 2000 in Bush v. Gore, you know, when the Supreme Court gets involved looking at a state Supreme Court, uh, things unexpected could ca could potentially happen. Uh, and we'll see what the Supreme Court does here. This has always been an issue that's going to be headed for the highest court. Because in earlier efforts to get Trump removed from the state presidential ballot failed in Minnesota, uh, in New Hampshire, in Michigan, and right now in Colorado, it's going forward to remove him. Alyssa, how do you expect Trump and his team to react to this stunning news? It, it truly is stunning news. And I expect this is a five alarm fire, even to the fact of Dave Chalian's point that this doesn't actually really change the map for Donald Trump. He's not necessarily playing for the 10 electoral votes in Colorado, but it's the precedent it sets. And it's also just the mindset that it signals to voters, which is for the first time in history, he is unfit to appear on a ballot for the presidency. Um, and of course, there would be implications if the Supreme Court upheld this. Um, I think that you're going to hear a massive outcry from him and his team. They're needlessly to say, needless to say, are going to be challenging this. And, and I do offer a word of caution because these these have obviously appeared in other states and mostly been struck down. Um, there is an argument to be made for the fact that this should ultimately ultimately be left up to the voters. I've heard this from quite a few Republicans who want to see us move on from Donald Trump, but they worry about playing into the hands of him being able to say the system is rigged. Now, it's not. This is the courts working their, the way they're supposed to, but he will quickly frame this as they're rigging the system against me in favor of Joe Biden. Watch for him to say that. So we've actually just got some breaking news out of Colorado. We're going to stay with Christy Greenberg and Hugo Lowell to talk about it. The Colorado Supreme Court 
court um, ruling that Donald Trump has now been disqualified from being on the primary ballot for the GOP. Again, this breaking news out of Colorado. Donald Trump, as we know, um, is now was fighting to be able to be on that primary ballot. The uh, Colorado Supreme Court now issuing a 200 something page opinion that we've just got. And we're going to go back to Christy Christy Greenberg and Hugo Lowell. I know, guys, you haven't had a chance to look at it. We're looking at it right now. It's 217 pages. But, Christy, I want to start with you on this particular issue. This is not the first state that there's been an attempt to be able to disqualify Trump being able to be on the ballot. But what's intriguing about it is that it's now being done in a way where the judicial system is having a say in terms of whether or not somebody can be on a ballot. Your thoughts about what we're hearing coming out of Colorado at this time? Well, it's, it is an interesting decision because the Colorado district judge, uh, Sarah Wallace, last month when she made her decision, she had a really puzzling decision where she found, based on the evidence, that Trump had engaged in insurrection, but essentially said, well, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, it doesn't apply to presidents. He's, he's not an officer uh, such that it applies to him, which was a really odd result. So when that was appealed, I think a lot of people had been scratching their heads and thought the appeal was appropriate. And, you know, I haven't read the basis of this, but it sounds like at least the Colorado Supreme Court said no. Actually, if he engaged in insurrection, yes, he is an officer and the 14th Amendment would apply to him. It would be a perverse result otherwise to have it apply to members of Congress and others in lower elected officials and not to the president of the United States. So it sounds like Colorado Supreme Court got it right in finding that this should apply to the president and presumably uh, determines that the factual findings of the district court and finding that he engaged in, in the insurrection were were upheld. So it, it is it is a result that is interesting. Uh, it is a result that seems like the right result. The big question will be whether or not it holds, because this is surely going to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I have a lot less confidence that the U.S. Supreme Court will will decide that Donald Trump should be disqualified from the ballot, given that conservative majority on that court. I also want to bring in now former federal prosecutor and the host of the podcast, Justice Matters, Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, again, I know that this is literally just coming across the wire right now, but I want to bring to our viewers' attention something that's on page eight of this 200-page opinion. This is what the Colorado Supreme Court has held. One, Section 3 that Christy was just talking about, Glenn, encompasses Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, let's be clear, encompasses the office of the presidency and someone who has taken an oath as president. On this point, the the district court committed reversible error. And so it's cleared up that issue of how can you be the president of the United States and not be deemed to be an officer um, for purposes of your oath? Uh, in addition, Glenn, the district court did not err in concluding that the events at the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, constituted a, quote, insurrection. The district court did not err in concluding that President Trump engaged in, and that's in quotes, that insurrection through his personal actions. And then President Trump's speech inciting the crowd that breached the U.S. Capitol on January 6th was not protected by the First Amendment. Glenn, we've been talking for days, if not weeks, about this idea of Donald Trump trying to hide behind the First Amendment to be able to give an excuse for what is otherwise going to be clear criminal conduct. Your thoughts about what this Supreme Court um, kind of ruling has now said as well. You know, it's interesting, Katie, because all along it has felt like anybody with a basic understanding of the English language would read Section 3 of the 14th Amendment and conclude that Donald Trump is disqualified from serving in the event a judge found, a court found, that he engaged in insurrection. And what's really interesting now, getting down into the legal weeds a little bit, you know, the Colorado trial court found as a matter of fact, after a trial on the merits, a trial at which several witnesses testified, expert witnesses, um, witnesses who were at the Capitol that day, found as a matter of fact that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection. And the reason that's so important as the case works its way through the appellate system now is factual findings like that are ordinarily given great deference in the appellate courts, because only the trial court judge gets to see the witnesses as they testify, assesses 
their demeanor and reaches factual findings. So the fact that the trial court judge, in the estimation of the Colorado Supreme Court, got the legal conclusion wrong and the, um, the Colorado Supreme Court basically reviewed that de novo from jump um, and reached a different conclusion, um, that, that is, that's one thing. But the fact that we have these factual findings from a trial court should, frankly, continue to win the day up through the appellate court system, uh, up to and including the Supreme Court. Because as long as those factual findings are supported by evidence of record, and they were, you know, this is going to be a real danger zone now moving forward for Donald Trump. Like what it should look like and whether or not we're actually ever going to see it in order to protect democracy as we know it. Your thoughts about the fact that now a Colorado Supreme Court has said that Donald Trump not only con his his that there was an insurrection on one six, but that he engaged in that insurrection through his personal actions and that his inciting of the crowd on that day is not protected First Amendment speech. We talk a lot about how Donald Trump elects to use words and speech in order to spur violence or to spur action by the people that follow him. Yeah, I, I can't overestimate how important it is for the American people to see this kind of accountability coming down. And I've often said, uh, thinking of uh, other what's happened to other um, other autocrats, that uh, some kind of ban would be uh, ideal as a solution. In fact, uh, Silvio Berlusconi, uh, who left office with uh, dozens of indictments, when he, after he left uh, for the final time, he was banned for um, from running for office for five years. And this is what kind of deflated his personality cult. And Jair Bolsonaro, a former Brazilian president, is banned from, from politics or running for office until 2030. So this is something that's been done elsewhere, and I've been saying for some time that it would be something uh, ideal in America, but I did not um, I did not think that this would happen. And I'm very pleased from the point of view of democracy protection. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the reading that Trump, quote, engaged in that insurrection through his personal actions. The court noted, we do not reach these conclusions lightly. We are mindful of the magnitude and weight of the questions now before us. We are likewise mindful of our solemn duty to apply the law without fear or favor and without being swayed by public reaction to the decisions that the law mandates we reach. This frankly stunning and unprecedented decision could have major implications in the 2024 race in which Trump is currently <clears throat> the Republican frontrunner. The decision will likely be appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, which could decide the matter on a national level. And when a big news uh, item like this drops, we there's one person we want to talk to more than anybody else. So, of course, Rachel Maddow joins me now on the phone. <laughs> Rachel, we had a whole show planned, my friend, uh, and that is completely <laughs> upended. This is what we're talking about now. I am in front of festooned with papers in front of me, but I just want to listen to you react to what Colorado's Supreme Court has done. Yeah, Joy, first of all, thank you for having me on. I know it's very short notice, and we're all just trying to absorb this. Um, I mean, uh, listen, I, I think in the, in the broad strokes in terms of our democracy, there are very few magic wands. <laughs> there, are, there are very few sort of, um, you know, magic spells that you cast that um, make, a, make a complex and difficult problem go away. That just, it just doesn't happen very often in our political system. And I think that we shouldn't be under any illusions um, about the, the character and the partisan inclinations, among other things, of, of this current Supreme Court as it is constituted. That said, yeah. it is not that is likely to preclude anybody from holding office in this country who had engaged in insurrection against this country. And so it's it's not unheard of, but it's it would it would be an incredible wild card.
It would indeed. And to your very point, um, you know, uh, there are 14 members who were expelled during uh, the Civil War for supporting the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. The 14th Amendment, Section 3, was written for the Confederacy. It was written because of that insurrection. And I think what was the most stunning to me, Rachel, I haven't gone through this a very, very thick ruling. It's, it's a big stack of paper. But the part that I've gotten through, what, what I found the most stunning is that what this court has said is that the, the, the previous court, the lower court, was not not wrong in saying that Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. Their only error was saying that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which again was to prevent insurrectionists from serving, didn't apply to presidents. They said, oh no, we agree with the lower court. He did engage in insurrection, but Section 3 does in fact apply to presidents. I guess it was surprising that the lower court said that it didn't. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting, after that district court ruling, um, the, the Trump side appealed part of it, and the plaintiffs appeared the, appealed the other part of it. <laughs> and so it was a you know, real question as to what the, what the Colorado Supreme Court was going to do here. But, I mean, let's keep in mind the scale of this. So this is about Colorado only. It will, you said it will likely be appealed to the Supreme Court. It will certainly be appealed to the United States Supreme Court. Um, and then their ruling... Um, I mean, depending on what they rule, they could just swat this down and, and, and make this go away. But if they engage with it in a more nuanced way, or if indeed they agree with the findings of the Colorado Supreme Court, then this will be uh, something that has national implications. And um, this, this, will, this will apply in, in, in many states. And so, uh, listen, I, I, I don't think this is the way that Donald Trump's political career ends, ultimately, because of what we know about this iteration of the United States Supreme Court. But mm -hmm. the factual findings about him having engaged in insurrection, as defined technically for the purposes of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which says insurrectionists cannot hold office in this country. It's not that you can't run for office. It's that you cannot hold office in right. this country because you have broken your oath. That is a, it's, it's, it's not a flippant decision. They, fact, they did fact-finding to arrive at that. And, 